hacksaw. Two by four, it is hacksaw, tough guy. No one is the hacksaw hour. Two by four, it is hacksaw, tough guy. No one is the hacksaw hour. What's up, everybody? It's Marcus D'Angelo. We are back for another episode of the Hacksaw Hour here on YouTube. And of course, I am joined by the man himself, the Hall of Famer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Jake, what's going on? Hacksaw, Hacksaw, what's going on, man? Oh, <laughs> I've been recording with Jake too much. You've been doing something with Jake too much. <laughs> Holy smokes. I mean, thank God I don't have feelings, you know. That's the old joke. Big guys have feelings, too. We have oh, larger man. nerve endings. <laughs> we actually hurt more. Oh. And here I am, the ultimate. You better not be no snowflakes. I used to be uh, called uh, Cockeye Dugan, but you call me Jake again, brother. We're going to have trouble. I don't <laughs> mind that Cockeye Dugan stuff. <laughs> you know, a lot of people mistake me for Shawn Michaels back in the day. I believe it. You know, from about a mile away, you know, like <laughs> that, that, that could be Sean, two arms, two legs. But first of all, hey, first of all, Marcus, I want to talk about something really kind of important, buddy. Oh, sure. Yeah. I want to oh. say, oh, and congratulations, <laughs> my friend, huh? Your Thank second you. daughter, welcome into the world. Great job, young man. Of course, the wife did all the work. Yeah, she did the heavy lifting on this one. I just happened to be there for it. Uh, but yeah, no, it was it was great, man. And uh, we are we we're really blessed. We have two happy, healthy girls. My yeah, I know is, Piper's is excited to have a sister. So uh, uh, congratulations, my friend. Thank you very much. And hey, look, I got to tell our listeners here on the show, you send me videos every once in a while. And in them, almost all of your videos end with you and your trademark. Oh, and uh, my daughter saw this video, one of the videos that you sent me. And ever since, she's been running around the house going, oh, yeah. so. as long as she doesn't start hitting you with a two by four, you're OK, buddy. <laughs> well, I'm sure that that'll come later That's on. quite a compliment, though. Uh, uh, you know, even nowadays, like you say, young kids, they, the, the hoe for some reason works and people like the hoe. People Knock like it off, hoe. brother. <laughs> people like the hoe. You can't beat the hoe. Uh, and actually, that's one of our questions later on uh, that we're going to get to. Um, uh, we're doing another Hacksaw Mailbag this week. It's our sixth edition of it. And I'm excited to get into these listener questions. Man, they absolutely brought it as they always do. But, Jim, before we get going on this, uh, I want to ask you about the sad news that broke yesterday as we were recording this. Mike Jones, better known to the wrestling fans as Virgil, sadly passed sure. away. And yeah, we saw a big outpouring online from the wrestling community about the loss. I was just wondering if you had anything to say about Virgil and your time around him. Yeah, I, I got along with Virgil. I'm, I'm sure you, well, actually you posted the picture of me hugging on to Virgil there towards the end, man. I mean, we weren't close, close, but uh, I always got along with Virgil. I always liked him. And I'll tell you a quick little story about him. There was a spot where I was chasing DiBiase around the ring when Virgil was his manager. And I chase DiBiase around the ring. Teddy jumps in, goes through the ring, jumps out the other side. I chase him. I jump in the ring. Virgil's sitting there. Boom. He clotheslines me as I come in. I come in. Virgil, boom. He knocked the hell out of me. I mean, whack. I, boom. I went down. I'm like, holy shit. I go back to the dressing room. I'm blowing smoke. Jesus, Mary. She's doing the work. as stiff as shit. Come on. What the hell's going on? Supposed to be a professional. And D.B. Hassan goes, hey, Hacksaw, it wasn't that long ago you were doing that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. Sorry, Verge. <laughs> <laughs> he potatoed the hell out of me, man. But yeah, I got along with Virgil. And of course, everybody made Virgil, made fun of Virgil there towards the end. He had a lot of hard luck, as a lot of guys do. But uh, what can you say? Man, you know, uh, a, a lot of people will point to Virgil and say like, oh, well, you know, he didn't really have success. But like you and I talk about, it's like, man, success is getting to work on TV in the wrestling profession for a number of years. And he did. He made it to the show, brother. Yep. <laughs> he made it to the show, man. Millions of people want to get there. That's what I tell kids. There's, you know, 1,200 NFL football players. There's 500, maybe 400 NBA basketball players. There's maybe a hundred wrestlers making a living, you know, That's it's crazy. television. It's more competitive than sports. And it's just not kids from America. You got kids from Japan, Australia, Europe. Everybody wants one of those spots. It's a very competitive business, man. And he made it there and Verge made it there and had a good run. 
He didn't handle his money financially. You know, people say, well, you're not making the money they're making nowadays. Well, no. <laughs> Neither are the football players making the money they are nowadays. It was a That's different right. time. But we were making, as Bobby Heenan said, more money than a guy moving refrigerators at Sears. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were making a decent living, and if you took care of yourself, it was okay. But a lot of guys didn't see the uh, short window of wrestling really is. And I was lucky. I got 40 years out of it. Most guys don't get that. Yeah, yeah. You and a handful of others actually got to work for 40 plus, I mean, and multiple decades. Forever. <laughs> Where a lot of guys, they were maybe on top for like 10 years, and then that's that. But, uh, that but, uh, yeah, yeah. Flash in the pans, man. You know, a lot. I, I, Goldberg got, I got along with Bill, and I saw him. He said, Doug, and you called me a flash in the pan. I said, Bill, I meant that as a compliment for you, brother. You came in, you made the big money, you got out. <laughs> That's a smart deal, brother. Yeah, you know, he didn't break his body up. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, it was been a good business for me and a lot of other guys. So, there's, like I said, there's the dark side of the ring. There's also the bright side of the ring. Maybe not I'm quite as big. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad, you know, you were on Dark Side of the Ring, but you tend to uh, to bring the positivity here on the show and kind of remind fans that there's a there's a better half to this, uh, to life after oh, wrestling. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Well, I, I was just uh, traveling this uh, this weekend, uh, this coming weekend, and uh, I do Comic-Cons all the time, and, and people say, you know, oh, I'll be wrestling. I said, who would think, you know, from doing high school gyms in La Ronja, Louisiana, with 200 people in the building, at 70 years old, I'd be traveling the world with TV and movie stars signing autographs. Incredible. How can you gripe? You know, how can you not be grateful for it? the people come up and say, hey, thank you, Hacksaw. I'm like, no, brother, you don't understand. Thank you. <laughs> my whole life, my whole family's life revolves around the, the folks that have uh, supported wrestling and me. It's uh, And it's been a great business. So I hate everybody saying, ah, wrestling. And people are marks. That's an old carnival term, marks, where you try to work somebody out of their money. Mm -hmm. I say, no, nowadays people put on a foot performance, as I always felt I try to do. I put on a performance and people pay to come see them. I wasn't trying to work them out of their money somehow. Right, right. And it, it wrestling started on the carnival grounds and some of that yeah. lingo sort of carried over, including oh, the yeah, carny way of talking. All that stuff. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Deborah, running from Deborah with the coffee. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's hey, back to Virgil. Okay. Oh, there she is, Deborah. Well, if you know that rumor about us doing a travel show. I don't know, it might be out there, but uh, you know, because we go all over, folks are liking the videos that you put together. Uh, there's a little smoke about a travel show, uh, Hex, Jim, Hex on Deborah on the road. Oh man, well, look, it's uh, our in YouTube. the old days, that'd be like an X rated show. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think I watched a movie with that title. Hey, once. brother, we sent you some videos. I'm like, holy shoot, which one we send them? <laughs> well, look, I'll guys. know when you're like this one day. Holy smoke, Axel. <laughs> I'm just going to send you a message back like, hey, wrong video, bud. Uh, <laughs> but hey, guys, you gotta you have to subscribe here on the YouTube channel if you want to see those videos. They're all coming up. It's more of just travel. Not those travel. videos. Yeah, not those ones. We're going <laughs> to okay. hold off on those. But the travel videos, you'll get yeah. to see those. Yeah. A little more cooking. Uh, we, got, we got your... Well, uh, we made cooking. Recipe. We got some other stuff, yeah. We all, you know, shoot, I got, I got some gun stuff coming up I'd like to do. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, you told me to get some content. Deborah's like, put the camera down. And poor Deborah's walking around like this. <laughs> At dinner, she's like this. Oh man, I will I'm trying to hold the it. camera, Jim. I, I can <laughs> tell you, know. <laughs> and I know you've also got a, you've also got a pretty badass car, and uh, I'm sure that the the listeners would love to. Oh, get that's a getting look close, that. man. My my guy, I, he uh, we we got the new tires for it, a 1946 Plymouth. But we put a I want to say a 350 four barrel engine. In. Every part of it uh, is new. Got the uh, captain chair seats in it. An automatic, uh, but the, the the body is the 1946, and the inside is is real young, kind of like old hacksaw, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a little rough on the outside, but hey, uh, still kicking, you know. Feeling good on the inside. Oh man. man! 
Oh, man, I'm I'm excited to have a better look at that, as I'm sure our listeners are. And I'm excited to get into these questions, man. Uh, you know, I, I put it up on YouTube and on social media. And holy smokes, it's just a huge outpouring from the fans here. So we'll try to hit as many as we can. As always, cool. folks, if we don't get to yours, tune in next time because I do roll them over from show to show if we miss them. And that's also a way, Jim, that I get folks to tune back in next time. So it's a little marketing gimmick there. Uh, all right. So uh, first up, we've got Billy who asks, what was your favorite opponent? And who's your favorite tag team partner? Uh, my favorite opponent was, uh, well, of course, remember, guys, he's not your opponent. He's your partner. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, he, if, if I, it was DiBiase, the short, long, uh, the short of the story. Because as I said, any of the second generation guys, Ted, Jake, Kurt Henning, guys that grew up in the business, they were hitting the ropes when they were 15, you know. Uh, they were just that much more polished than the regular guys. And that's why when I came in, uh, you know, I, I did the loop, went around to I ended up in Mid-South where they tagged, you know, Bill Watts had enough for a vision to see that I had some talent, but I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And he tagged me up with uh, DiBiase and uh, uh, enemy of mine, uh, enemy, Matt Bourne. But I give Bourne credit. He was a second generation. He was a good talent. So a guy like me that was didn't understand wrestling at all to be teamed up with two guys like that that really knew the business, I was able to learn an awful lot uh, working with DiBiase. And I, I wrestled Ted uh, thousands of times all over the world, you know. And I joke, I said, Ted DiBiase may be the greatest technical wrestler in the sport, but he can't fight a lick. And when you're in there with Hacksaw Duggan, it's a fight, tough guy. Ho! <laughs> I didn't get the hole in early in the show, brother. What the hell? <laughs> I knew something was wrong. It was kind of bumping around inside me like an old alien, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm I had glad to get we the got hole out of me. <laughs> Only got a few holes left, you know? <laughs> but DiBiase and uh, what was it? The tag team partner? Sergeant Slaughter. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, I enjoyed working with Sarge, man. I did. And uh, I had a lot of fun working with Sarge. I wrestled. That was the first main thing I ever did in wrestling. It's Big Jim Duggan in the WWWF working for Vince McMahon Sr. And I'm doing jobs for Angelo Mosca and Ken Patera. And finally, Sergeant Slaughter does the Cobra Clutch Challenge. (laughs) I got in a chair and Sarge blocked it in. I kicked around and fought around and... Down I went, man, and that was the first thing I did in wrestling. And uh, and then Sarge, uh, he he wrote a book how he ribbed me, in a, not the book about me and how he ribbed me, but in the book how he ribbed me when we went bowling. He worked me bowling left handed all the time. We went for big money, and he switched hands and started bowling right handed. <laughs> Slaughter, I, I like Sarge, man. the true talent and a, a true big star. I mean, GI Joe. Yeah, Sarge, uh, we enjoy tagging together. And the USA gimmick. I, I love doing the USA gimmick, and I think Sarge did too. Yeah, the two of you together, it, it all just kind of made sense. It was a good way to kind of rehabilitate his character after the whole like Saudi uh, sympathizer thing that he did uh, that one year. I think it was 1990. Uh, Jim, was there ever well, talk there was a rumor getting... that they were going to put the straps on us, but uh, Animal got in there and bent Vince's ear, and they put it on uh, LOD instead. Oh, I mean, they could have had a, a series of matches with you two, maybe swapping back and forth, uh, those two teams. That would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I, you know, it's also, that's the deal. I never had a belt, so it's kind of a trivia deal, you know, who hasn't had a belt, like Jake and myself. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Jake never got one, really, uh, in WCW or WWE. You ended up at least, you know, having a couple of runs there and oh, becoming the right, final I beat champion. Austin so bad, he had to shave his head and change his name for the U.S. title. <laughs> Chased the boy right out of the territory. I'll go to <laughs> WW, Hacksaw's here. Whatever became of that guy, anyways, I think he got yeah, out of the business. I think he's uh, working at uh, Walmart. <laughs> There's a lot of guys that look like him, I'll tell you. I, there sure are. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Wes, who asks, did you spend much time around Chris Benoit? No. No. That whole generation of guys, they come in, Benoit, the Malenko, uh, Guerrero, uh, Ray Perry Ray. Saturn. Perry Saturn, yeah. The, the, and, you know, I wouldn't say it was a napoleon complex but it was a napoleon complex brother <laughs> you know all these guys are here and everybody else is up here you know and it's a oh i'll beat the giant well fine it's a work brother beat the giant 
Ad ogni volta squishy, squishy, squishy. <laughs> 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 was it i mean when you're in wcw and these kind of smaller guys are getting a ton of tv time and you know they're starting to to kind of rise up i mean great talents all of them too though i can't sure. you can't you know i can bust your chops but you know they bust the old hacksaws chop and that was the deal they wanted the old timers to move on you know bagwell was like time for the old guys to move on you know brother <laughs> Pull it from my dead, cold hands. <laughs> I'm sticking around as long as I can, and everybody else is too. Uh, I said, if you want the spot, come get the spot. <laughs> yeah, what is it? What do they that want you to retire? <laughs> <laughs> they want you to retire? Just give up that money? No way. No way. Shit, brother. That's the way I feed my family. That's why I ended up on Team Canada, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> a whole other thing. Uh, well, I mean, when it came to Chris Benoit and you wound up hearing about the whole thing with him and Nancy, that tragedy, um, I mean, it's shocked, surprised. I have to imagine you were shocked. just like Everybody was shocked. I don't think anybody, uh, you know, uh, Benoit would show up with that young boy dressed in a suit and tie in the dressing room. He'd come around and say hello to everybody. He was a polite young man. You know, you see the upbringing. You know, my first thought that someone else killed him. So, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know who. You know, so, and it, it actually ruined a huge gimmick if you think about it. That's the, the night before is when they blew Vince's limousine limousine up. That's right. And they never followed that up. I mean, that was a great, beautiful. You know, Vince got in the limo, his leg closed in, and all was in the limo. I, I'd love to see how they do it. Uh, they had a kid, got a man named Ellis, that did all their behind-the-scenes stuff. Who was an artist? He was master. He's been there from the old, old days, and he would come up with that stuff, do all the stunts, actual stunt stuff for WW. Guy named Ellis, a stand-up kid guy, and uh, I, I'm sure he came up with that explosion. I, I said, I said, somebody finally got Vince. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it was a crazy angle, and yeah, the whole thing just went away. And you know, you brought up Kevin Sullivan there, and I do have to ask: uh, when they were doing that whole angle uh, where Kevin Sullivan was wrestling against Chris Benoit, uh, basically for his wife, and then you know, it's it's kind of a crossover between what was happening in real life and storyline. I mean, uncomfortable in the locker room, or what's what's the tone and tenor of that whole situation? <laughs> And Sullivan's from the old days, brother. <laughs> I mean, it was his wife, uh, you know. <laughs> as long as you stay north of the Mason Dixon line, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm just joking. If there was anything I would think was more uh, Benoit being a little concerned, but they were both professionals and nothing ever, they both worked well together. Brian Minnick is up next. As a fellow New Yorker, Jim, what do you miss most about home? I'm having a hard time adjusting to living here in North Carolina. Yeah, the, the four unique seasons, you know. Uh, I tell you, here in South Carolina right now, that you know, it's wintertime. The leaves are off the trees, but it's, everything's great and stuff. You know, up there with my sister up at Glens Falls, they've got about two feet of snow. A uh, whole different lifestyle. That's why it's neat kind of to live in the South and be in our business. Because, you know, boom, what, two weeks ago, I was up in Boston in a big heavy snowstorm throwing snowballs. We had to drive around in a big Hummer. Uh, it was a, and then, boom, we got on the plane. We put our coats in the overhead and flew south. I mean, but I do miss the, the change of season. Spring up in New York. You're really excited to see it. Uh, summer's not too ha hot. And one thing about uh, New York that down south the grass is much softer in the north than it is in the south. The south grass is very coarse. Wow. And you, you don't really roll around in it. You know, not that I roll in the grass much, but <laughs> I, mean, I still mow the grass with my little tractor. I'm out there mowing. So I, I know the grass. And let me tell you, it's a lot coarser out there. <laughs> and get off the lawn, you little bastard. <laughs> You're yelling at the duck out there, smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody else said uh, it was funny back when I lived in a neighborhood, right? You have to do promos, right? You have to do a phone in for the radio. Oh, and what I get that down there? 911 next door. <laughs> He's yelling and screaming again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll you beat you, I'll kick you, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so your neighbors are here and you next door. Uh, like, yeah. Oh my god, this well, guy. They were kind of petrified when we first moved in anyway. I'm sure they're moving in next door. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, when you move into a neighborhood as somebody who's been on TV and obviously kids love you and your character, I mean, were a lot of kids coming by your house, knocking on the door, trying to come meet you? Well, I've uh, never lived in a real uh, crowded neighborhood, you know, but uh, I always joke about when we first moved in to see the house. <laughs> I pulled up in front of the house, I had a big car with all black windows, music, da 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 da, blasting, all the uh, smoke come bellowing out of the car. I jump out, I'm about 280 pounds with a tank top, a bandana, my pants tucked in my boots. Deborah jumps out, she's in short shorts and high heels. I'm like, hi, we're your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're actually moving in. It looks great, honey. <laughs> but then once they get to know you, it's okay. But first impressions is wrestlers. Jake told a great story about losing his snake outside, and here it got tangled up in one of his bushes out in his yard, and his neighbors were watching him struggle to get a big snake out of the bush. <laughs> so, <laughs> as man, the life of a wrestler. You stick out a little bit, oh. huh? Oh, well, you know, that's the old joke when a bunch of wrestlers come over to visit in the summertime and leave. Everybody's lawn furniture is like at an angle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, there was another follow-up kind of a question, and I can't find who asked it, but I'll just ask it. Um, somebody asked, what made you settle in North Carolina after growing up in New York? Or, uh, South, South Carolina. Carolina, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I grew up in New York, but I played my college ball in Texas, right? And then I, I bounced around a little bit uh, with football. But then uh, I started wrestling in Dallas with Von Erichs. And then once you start wrestling, I went from there. But long story short, when I started to – when I bought my first home was in Louisiana. And uh, then when I signed, because you can live anywhere as long as you're near an airport. Then when I signed with uh, WWF, uh, I moved to Florida. And everybody's like, move to Tampa. I'm like, well, I don't, I want to be close enough to go visit the boys, but I don't want the nasty boys coming by at two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in Florida, but not too close, you know. So we moved over into Titusville, just north of Cocoa Beach by the Space Center. That's why we scared all the folks when we moved in. They were all the astronaut folks. So <laughs> <laughs> they got their, you know, uh, protector for their pins. Hacks, oh, how you doing, brother? Hacksaw Duggan, nice to meet you. Is that Mace? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then you, we you lived did. in florida yeah we lived in florida for 20 years that's why i had my gym hacksaw duggan's muscle and fitness catchy title yeah <laughs> a big huge money pit was it <laughs> oh it was horrible but i for my grand opening for my grand opening in titusville i had hogan macho beefcake and the nasty boys holy smokes <laughs> I didn't really want the nasty boys, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it was there. No, no, just joking. But back then, nobody had any time off at all. Everybody's working all the time for Ho for all those guys, even then the nasty Hogan, Macho, to take a day off, drive from Tampa all the way across Florida to Titusville to an open open my gym, the whole town, Titusville, Florida, the whole town, the was <laughs> jam packed. We got out of the limo, knob, picked up the mayor, you know, it was crazy, <laughs> you know, and uh, for those guys to do that. And, of course, I got them all a uh, sub sandwich for their help. Oh, well, that's a good payoff. No, yeah. they were good friends. And I, to this day, uh, you know, if you ever see a picture, do you see them out there on the Internet? There's quite a few. And Macho was all dressed in his gimmick. Hogan was all in his character. Uh, it, it was a huge favor those guys did. Imagine doing that for me. Hogan, yeah, Macho, Beefcake, and the Nasty Boys. And back then, you didn't have like, you know, five days off a month if you're lucky. Especially Hogan and Macho. They'd have it two days off a month. Man, what a great way to attract people to the gym. But ultimately, didn't work out, huh? You oh, ended up God. selling it. What happened? Yeah, they opened up a wellness center. So all my insurance people. So I got a bunch of muscle heads. I'll pay you next month, Hacksaw. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> all my insurance people hit the road. And we're the try. Stick to wrestling. Stick to what you know, bro. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Bob Snap, who asks, who is the one opponent that you hated the idea of having to wrestle? Iron Mike Sharp. Really? Oh, Iron Mike was stiff as a... Oh, God, he was, he was a nice guy. 
he was just he was just robotic and stiff and you couldn't you couldn't have at least I couldn't have a good match with Mike. I'm sure there's some talented guys out there that you know can I feel I can work with a broom, tell you the truth, but working with Mike was hard for me, like pulling teeth. And he would beat the shit out of me too, that he had that forearm thing. I'm like, brother, they can't feel it. <laughs> they can see it, you know. It's that's the deal. As we talk about the kids nowadays. Look, look, look at this. I'm all bruised up, brother. Caps and sleeves at this level. You're a professional. It's yeah, supposed man. to look like that, but feel like this. That's it. And You're now, not going to convince somebody. Oh well, that was real. <laughs> <laughs> I look, at that one I know, was, I'll tell you. I know if I was wrestling, I don't need the audience to believe it's real well enough to have somebody like punch me in the face. Well, I don't know. Time, and, on second thought, you know, I'm out there going, "Oh, geez, I'll do this for the people, bro." <laughs> what the hell? That's an NFL guy. Hey, brother, take a razor blade, cut your head open. Oh, there's no way. <laughs> and well, that was my reaction coming into wrestling. You know, like you get some juice. I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah, you take a razor blade. Holy <laughs> smokes, we a chicken in here. <laughs> a chicken in the house, too. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> Pick it up. Let's get it on the show. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment in hacksaws. <laughs> We're having chicken tonight, huh, honey? <laughs> there goes dinner. It'll be ready. No, it's a beautiful day here. The, the, the back door is open, and one of our chickens is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Ah! Oh, it's, it's on the attack now. It heard ah, you talking about dinner. rogue chicken. <laughs> uh, hey, so rumor has it that Iron Mike Sharp had some uh, peculiar shower habits. Can you confirm oh, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mike, we got locked. Suppose we got locked in the Boston Garden, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he got locked. No, he got locked in the Philly Spectrum, Boston Garden. He went out the wrong no door. <laughs> he went out, the door closed, he was locked out. Oh, my gosh. And he's in his gear, he's supposed to go to the ring. <laughs> They're playing his music. The are out sharp. Is he just, just like pounding on the door back there? <laughs> And somebody's trying to get it. Like, God damn kids. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hilarious. Oh, oh. What a character, man. Uh, did you ever find out why? Nice guy, though. I got along with Mike. Everybody got along. Nobody messed with him. Mike was a legit tough guy. Yeah. I've heard that. Did you ever find Nobody. out? Did you ever find out why he had uh, such a weird shower? Like he would stay in the shower for literally an hour, two hours at a time, yeah. right? He would and really soak down big time and really clean himself up. He was, uh, yeah, he was, you know, that was just his particular, you know, compared to a lot of the guys, that wasn't bad, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a rather be clean, I guess. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was a very, uh, and he, he didn't travel, he traveled by himself, he didn't travel with anybody, you know, particular guy, but everybody got along with Mike. Um, did she just walk by in a hacksaw Duggan robe? What is that? What? what? My monitor ain't on, what's on? Oh, okay. Somebody what just happened? walked behind you. Looked like they were wearing the, the Jim Duggan Ooh. cape. The King oh, Duggan. Can cape. you imagine if you found that original cow and cape? Oh, I mean, man. WWF has been looking for it, or WWE. They even came here looking for it. Hundreds of treasure hunters around the world have been looking for the original cape and crown. Jim Cornette even's got a, a replica, I guess. He's trying to put it off as a real crown. But I wish I could find that original cape and crown. It's if I could find that cape and crown, man, you better believe it. I'd have it in Philadelphia this year. Oh, but I'll man. have to look around for it, man. My monitor wasn't on. <laughs> so all I, kinds I, of strange. I, well, you see, I have a chicken in the house. All kinds of things go by here. Bro. I'll look <laughs> around. Maybe next time we get together, I'll find out. But if imagine that. If everybody's looking for that cape and crown. Oh. Years ago, what happened was I sold it on eBay. And it took off on eBay. And, uh, you know, I lost track of it, obviously. And it's been gone for probably 20, 30 plus years. I don't know how you do doing no better than me. And uh, WWE came here looking for the uh, U.S. title and the original Harley Race. That's Harley Race's Cape and Crown. Oh, I said, okay. no, I, I can't find it. I said, I've been looking for it, too. But if I find it, uh, yeah. Oh, man. Now you've yeah, got it. Okay, I found it. Bring it out, Deborah. Come on. Bring it out here. You did I find it. I found the original. Harley Race, Cape and Crown, brother. No way. Yes, yeah. This is it. Look <laughs> I at knew this. I saw something. Look at that. 
this is Harley's and the one I, I'm on uh, one of the uh, the magazine covers and everybody WWE has been looking all over for this where I signed it my date didn't and signed it for the wow. gentleman that bought it over two decades ago over two decades ago that's the that's the cape the crown <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! I found this man. I wanted to surprise you with it, Marcus. That is but, so. Uh, you know, everybody's been. You can tell this is the the original man because you know it, it weighs it, over four pounds. You know, it that was used really... in finishers and stuff, and it's beat up. A lot of the beads are gone. Well, most of them are gone. There's one, two, or three are there. They're still there, and I joke. It's like a bushel basket, you know. <laughs> Har Har Harley's head was huge, man. <laughs> you know, and that's when Macho beat me. They ended up giving him that new fancy Dan crown and cape. And that's why I had this one. And years ago, I'm like, well, shoot. Who's going to use a cape and crown? And I stuck it out in there and put it on eBay. Boom, this guy snatched it up and it's been lost for 20 years. 20 years and you know my dad was like a detective you know yeah <laughs> he was right and i or helped track well I, actually it kind of helped track me down but this is it i'm going to have it in philadelphia for photo shoots and uh, the original cape and crown man i'm really excited about this guy and there's a, a wwf magazine on, with me on the cover with this cape and crown so I just wanted to kind of give a little teaser there, let folks know that in Philadelphia, we're going to have the Cape and Crown for photo shoots, man. You've got to come by and Jim's table. WWE, don't contact me. Nobody else contact me. It's not going anywhere. It's <laughs> not going anywhere. So enjoy it, folks. See it when you can in Philadelphia. An honor to have actually Harley races uh, the Kings uh, crown and cape. And Haku had it too, too. Unbelievable! I found it. I couldn't believe it, man. How did well, you get it back? Me and, uh, the guys being real generous with me and uh, letting me uh, use it and stuff. But uh, it's exciting to have it back here in my possession. Man, that's so. It's uh, you got to borrow it back. Like uh, wrestling news, brother. <laughs> that is. It's big. It's so cool that you're gonna have that, guys. Make sure you swing by Jim's table at WrestleCon there in Philly. I'm gonna be floating around there too, and I'd be happy to meet everybody. So. Yeah, please, uh, please come and get a photo op with Jim. I mean, that's a once in a lifetime photo op, right? And there. the cape and crown. Yeah, I don't know how long I'll be able to hold on to it. Uh, the original owners actually let me borrow it, uh, and uh, yeah, not, not the original owner, the guy that has tracked it down. Yeah, and, uh, he, he's a, a very, very good friend, and he's going to let me use it for WrestleMania weekend. So it'll be fun to have out there. It's good to have that thing on my head again. Me and Man. Harley, we had we had a we got to do a show about Harley. I, we had some battles. Absolutely, we should definitely do a show about Harley. And by the way, I actually just talked to my wife. I was like, "Hey, uh, Jim was on this show called Legends House. You want to start watching it so that we can do an episode on the podcast about it?" And she said, "Yeah, I'll watch it." So uh, that's coming soon, folks. Oh man, yeah, because a lot of people come up to me and go, "Hacksaw, I didn't like you as a wrestler." But I liked you on Legend House. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they put me and Piper together expecting a, you know, a drama because me and Piper, we didn't really know each other. So yeah. The first two or three days was like, yeah, how you doing, brother? <laughs> but then we hit it off, man. We became best friends. Uh, yeah, that, that, I love the pipe. God bless. So I haven't had a, there's a million stories we got to talk about Legend House. But I, I quit drinking when Piper died. God bless him. Well, I can't wait to get into the series. And yes, we will be talking about that this year. Um, okay, next up, we've got Reggie Gwynn, who asks, Hi, Jim, did you ever see Wrestler's Court? What do you remember about it? Were you ever part of that whole thing? No, that was after me, uh, Wrestler's Court. Uh, and that, I guess that's the evolution of wrestling. And it's probably a good thing. And I understand Undertaker was the judge. And, uh, you know, couldn't ask for a better man than that wrestler. A better man than mm -hmm. Todd Baker, and he's a stand-up guy. So he's a great job. No, my generation, uh, wrestler's court was. Uh, hey, can I talk to you in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was wrestler's court. Well, uh, speaking and of, uh, took care of it personally. And sometimes I'm sure that you got faster results that way. <laughs> well, I beat the hell out of Matt Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, actually, we've got kind of a related question here up next from Truth Hurts Everybody. Uh, they ask, 
Did Jim ever see Ultimate Warrior fight someone in the locker room? How did you get along with him? So no, there was always uh, a rumor about Warrior getting into a fight with like Rick Rude. If he did, he got beat up. <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. In in general, muscle guys aren't real tough guys. You know, the they spend a lot of time, you know, they, in general. That's just a big generalization. Mm. But Rude was the real deal. He could go, man. And uh, yeah, if there was a fight, no, Rude would have beat him up where I think we would have heard more about it. It might have been a little shoving match or something like that, but but no real fight. Because everybody knows uh, 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 Dick Slater and Sting in Mid-South where Dick beat Sting up pretty good. Yeah, those two guys were known to be tough guys. Yeah. and Rude, uh... Rude, he's that Minnesota crew. He run with the Road Warriors and, and uh, Nails and uh, those guys. He was he was a, He was a real deal. Not a man to piss with. Now, uh, you you brought up the uh, whole Dick Slater and Sting thing. Rumor has it that uh, Dick Murdoch actually held back Warrior while uh, while Slater got got even with with Sting. Uh, I know that that was in the UWF. Were you there when that whole thing happened? I think I was, but I wasn't in that dressing room. And if you, you you've seen pictures of Dick Slater, right? Yes, you I know have. Dick Slater. Yeah, yeah, and if. He can hold back the ultimate warrior. <laughs> the warrior wasn't trying real hard. <laughs> yeah, well, it's if he uh, wanted to get past Dick, he could get past Dick, you know. But Dick, Dick, Dick could go. But um, uh, man, uh, that's shit. Slater probably could have taken both of them. <laughs> I've heard Slater was a bad dude. Slater was uh, the real deal. Yeah, I mean that's why back in the day you'd have trouble in a bar. You know, I joke Terry Gordy be having a drink, right? It'd be. Well, hey, <laughs> that kind of hurt. <laughs> you hurt me, <laughs> man. Uh, Terry Gordy, I'm sure, was a uh, force to be reckoned with out there if he got pissed off. Yeah, Gordy, Gordy was a big man. Yeah, and Steve Williams, uh, you know, uh, in general, like I said, uh, wrestlers in general, every day you're throwing punches, you're blocking punches, you're getting potatoes, you're throwing potatoes. You know, it's just a joke. I wouldn't try to do a plumber's job. Plumber shouldn't try to do my job. <laughs> That's right. You fight and for that, a living. And you're always a phony wrestler uh, until you go to court. Then it goes like this, 10, 20, 30, 000. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you hit him, it goes up, right? You're like, well, I'm going to sue you. I'm oh, getting man. my money's worth. We're not done. <laughs> <laughs> man, maybe not worth it. Uh, ultimately, <laughs> I know that I've heard a few of the guys say like people try to instigate fights with them at the bar, probably hoping for a payday. Yeah, I've, I've gotten sued and lost money. You know, uh, and then like a dumb jerk, I have ple- appealed it and lost more money. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I used excessive force because I hit the guy twice. I should have only hit him once. Is that really a thing where you're defending yourself and they're saying like, well, you probably should have only done it once. Yeah. Yeah. That's, no. they tell me about it, brother. That's what they, they told me in court. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm coming, I was coming out of the ring too. I'm blowing smoke. And all of a sudden got popped me. I went, boom, boom. And I just kept going, you know? Yeah. It's and look, it, you know, it's I that whole thing is weird because it's like I know that you're a big guy, but you're st- you still have the right to defend yourself if you think somebody's going to try to hurt you. So I don't know. Yeah, that I did, I did, but I didn't have to hit him the second time. <laughs> oh, geez, ridiculous. Well, I'm from out of town, right? Think about it. You're from out of town. You're sitting there, your suit's too tight. <laughs> I got Deborah sitting next to me here. <laughs> <laughs> The poor guy, I don't know, Hacksaw punched me. I don't know what happened. Oh, my God. And you're there, and you're a huge guy, so they're like, look at this guy picking on these little guys out here. Yeah. And the deal is he came, he was the third one in a row, so he came past two other people to punch me. And like I said early, when you were hurting my feelings, I had feelings, too. He punched me in the face. What the hell? Yeah. I don't care how yeah. small the guy is. It's going to hurt, and you're going to react to yeah, it. Sure. Yeah, sure. But. And, and he sued the building and he sued the company. And the day of court, the company, you know, Watts and the building, they settled. But I was young and dumb. I'm like, well, he punched me. I'm going to fight back. Oh, <laughs> the lawyer's man. like, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's uh, some money down the tubes and a lesson learned. Yeah, well, between that and the gym is holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> well we got we got to start gotta, talking about i got a great idea for investment marcus <laughs> hello 
<laughs> we better start talking about some happy stuff. Let's get on to the next. Um, he hate me asks Jim had one of the best finishing moves ever while in WCW. At one point, he would reach into his tights, pull out some tape, spin his arm around to tape it up a bit, then punch his opponent. Where did this idea slash inspiration come from? Um, well, for some reason, they made me the tape fist champion, and my grandmom. Uh, or great grandmom from Ireland was a tape fist champion of Ireland. And we did this huge vignette where I was supposed to go to Ireland, but we went to an Irish bar and an Irish restaurant, taped everything like I was in Ireland and I was a tape fist champion and I was doing it. All of a sudden I realized, Oh shoot, I can spin it around, you know, and the tape would spin around my hand. And it was just kind of like throwing the board up in the air and catching it. It was like, Oh shit, that works. <laughs> you know, and uh, I spin it around, and it, it was cool. It would wrap around my hand, and boom. It was pretty fun stuff. Yeah, of course, I, I tell you, especially in the house show, I'd dig for it for a while. <laughs> 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 He's grabbing his Hey, <laughs> Yeah, what is he reaching for exactly? <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. Really enjoying himself out here. Uh, uh, shouldn't have to look for it that hard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the uh, the video that they showed of you looking at, like, your ancestors uh, from, you know, Ireland or whatever. Yeah. They, they, I think that they had you dressed up as, like, an old lady in one of them. Yeah, that was, that was like, great. That wasn't me, brother. Just like that wasn't <laughs> Deborah walking by. Are you kidding? <laughs> Wrestler's honor. <laughs> oh, folks, we're going to have to share that one online. It's good stuff. Um, next up, we've got Ray Finkel who asks Jim always, Jim, I always liked your character would stomp around my living room, chanting USA whenever you were out. Uh, when did you get the idea or where did the idea of ho come from? Yeah, that's, you know, I get asked that a lot and I, I really don't kind of remember. It's just like, I would always interact with the people and I just kind of, ah, ah, and I started yelling back and it evolved into a ho, you know, it's, uh. Funny, it works. And then, like you said, even uh, Piper, your young daughter, it's, oh, and it's neat being at arenas and be lacing up your boots and, oh, oh, or after the show in your car, you're leaving, you're hearing people, ho and stuff, you know, and it just works better than the, woo! <laughs> woo! <laughs> and happy birthday to Rick. He just turned 75. Good for him, man. And as we're recording this, Rick was just on TV last night. So, man, it's he's still going, brother. Yeah, yeah, he's the, uh, as Hogan even says, best ever uh, flair. Got to give it up to the guy. <laughs> um, Loose Rob, I think is how you say it, asks, I grew up in Tulsa going to Mid-South matches. I've heard Tulsa was a rough town to wrestle in. Can you talk about any interesting experiences you had there? Rough town, that's, that's kind of an understatement. <laughs> it had the tougher fight getting to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> they used to serve booze there. In Tulsa? Yeah, uh, oh. and so the people were a little fired up. But Houston did it too, a couple of towns. I'm pretty sure Tulsa did. If they didn't, they they didn't have to, I guess, because half the time they'd be in the ring with you. Uh, because again, Mid South was not sports entertainment. Bill Watts thrived on it being believable. You know, mm -hmm. he'd, he'd be much happier if things are stiff instead of loose. You know, so Mid South was a, a tough, snug territory, and of course, everybody knows if you get lost a bar fight, you you, you can. And then back then, you'd have a lot of bar fights. You know, you go out to bars all the time, and you wouldn't get arrested, and you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't get sued. It was a different, you know, it was a wild west kind of. And uh, yeah, but uh, you know, Watts, he ran a, a tight ship, and you learned a lot there, though. I don't know what goes through people's heads when they see somebody like you or Terry Gordy across the bar and say like, well, cool I think how cool, like I said, Haku yeah. was a magnet, right? He'd walk in the bar, the biggest jack off in the bar, like, <laughs> and, hey, hey, hey. and so I think I feel like being hospitalized tonight. I'm going to go over to that guy who's six yeah, foot yeah, five yeah. and try to fight him. <laughs> yeah. We better have your liver for dinner tonight, buddy. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. Um, yeah. Next up, we've got Junior McM, who asks, uh, well, he says, love the home videos, Jim. Who is Thank on you. Jim's? Yeah, they're, they're going really well on there. I'm excited to, to do more. Uh, he asks, who is on Jim's Mount Rushmore of wrestling? This is a big question in wrestling nowadays, so I'm curious to, oh, yeah. to hear. Oh, well, yeah, obviously, you got Flair and Hogan, you know, they're big and a boom. 
Got to be. Yeah. After that, yeah, it's a toss up between a lot of guys. Uh, even though I don't really like the guy, I'll say Steve Austin. You know, he's a good wrestler, a great wrestler. Uh, Brett's, you know, uh, and of course, you got Cena. Look at Cena. I mean, he, uh, there's a every every generation. Everybody's like, well, they'll, they'll never be able to follow a Bruno. And there was Hogan. Well, they'll never be able to follow Hogan. And then there was uh, the Rock. And they'll never be able to follow the Rock. And then there's Cena. And they'll never be able to follow Cena. Now there's Roman and the Cody. So there's, yep. a, there's always somebody. So I, you know, just long I, I, I do uh, ditto a Hogan Flair, Hogan Flair, <laughs> <laughs> and then a whole Riddler all underneath them. Man, yeah, there's a lot, and I've I've also heard a lot of people say like, well, their answer is who made the most money in wrestling. That's who wins. Uh, so it's not well, always I disagree, about like, brother. I'll disagree with that, and I'll disagree with uh, who won get the most money and who won the most championships. Who's living the happiest life? There you go. I'm 70 years old. I'm with my wife for 40 years. I never had to go to rehab for booze or drugs. I put two daughters through college. No felony arrest. A couple much misdemeanors, but it was the 80s. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a very successful life for me. I, You know, people say, well, you're never champion. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're living a great yeah. life, and I mean, and, by the way, that guys too, not just me. They're like we talked in the early part of the show, the bright, bright side of the ring. Mm-hmm. We start a show, Marcus. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, that'll be our YouTube show, Bright Side of the Ring. <laughs> I like it. Uh, it's interesting though hearing you say that because those ways that you just described yourself in your life, there, like, I'm trying to think of another wrestler who checks those boxes. There aren't a ton of them. No, well, you know, uh, Bischoff's been with his was, uh, um, Lori, Cat, Ernest Miller, oh, Sonny yeah. Ono. We were somewhere with uh, at a, a charity event with those those three couples, and we were the ones that have been together the least amount of time. Wow. <laughs> so, like I said, there's a positive starts to wrestling, but people just never hear that. That's a shame. We're going to try to keep the positivity going here. Um, Chad Fry asks, what was Jim's max bench press, squat, and deadlift? Uh, I don't remember my squat and dead, but I had a 505 bench in the contest. So, I, But I was on the gas. You know, I can't say I was drug-free by no means. I was pushing, and everybody was strong back then. But uh, you know, their bench was a big measure, and you know, 505 in the contest. I never knew that you had uh, you had experimented with steroids. How long were you using them? Well, I, I never was on a cycle or nothing like that. I just realized guys were taking them. So every once in a while, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know. I and, and of course, that I I took them enough where I was. I mean, steroids they made a difference. Holy smokes, you could see me at uh, two hundred and eighty pounds. I was jacked up, man. I like I said, I was benching five oh five. Uh, but also now we're looking at a guy with a heart problem and fighting cancer. So once you stick in your body, you got to look at, it, you know, you've got to deal with the realize down how bad the gas was for you back then, you know, right. You knew it couldn't be good for you, but you know, I, I hear all it the time. Make that... a difference. It'd be hard for somebody to compete against somebody on the gas. If you were right. I mean, players, one guy was on one wasn't. Yeah. What do you think about a wrestler using steroids nowadays under like doctor supervision? I mean, because wrestling is not necessarily a sport in the traditional sense; uh, it's it's a performance. Uh, would you be okay with guys, you know, uh, with them legalizing it for? No, I, I, well, it should be like well, motorcycle helmets, you know, the guy's personal choice. But no, I think uh, steroids, especially a lot of guys, younger guys, the younger and younger will will take them, and they do do affect your body. But you know, of course, WWE they usually have the the P test. And then, you know, poor Virgil, God bless him, we were talking about Virgil. We, we squeezed squeeze the last little clean pee out of Virg. <laughs> he was give the one who was peeing clean. Give me a little bit. But <laughs> <laughs> you lined up to get Virgil's pee, you know, because he was clean. And then they, <laughs> and then they, then they uh, started testing it. So we had, you had like a little hand warmer. These they sold online. You get a little pee warmer. You get that little warmer. <laughs> so it would keep it warm enough. So they put the thing on. Oh, temperature's fine. And then finally they had to hire a guy who, who wasn't hired. They had one of the agents, producers, be a, a pee watcher. And that's hired. You oh. know, Jake, 
Jake recently told me about that, and he said uh, at one at one point Nick Bockwinkle was watching him pee, and he's like, "This guy was the former AWA champion, mm-hmm. and now he's got a he's got to be a pecker checker." Is how Jake put it. I think Jake was just embarrassed. Um, oh yeah, was he doesn't have the snake? Yeah, down there. I don't want to say nothing, you know. <laughs> he's got awful small feet, though. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm gonna have to play this one for Jake. We'll let him respond. Um, Perfect Sigma asks, "What is Jim's favorite match he was involved in, and what are Jim's all-time top three matches he wasn't involved in?" Boy, that's that covers a lot of ground. Who? Obviously, the, the, my favorite match ever. Uh, I told the story before. My pop would bring me to my, me and my sister to Madison Square Garden in New York City to see the circus you know we didn't have a lot of money growing up my dad worked two jobs he was a cop it was a big deal to drive the 200 miles to new york city so i had my dad who was my best man at my wedding and uh to have with me and drive into new york city and pull up in front of madison square garden and see hacksaw jim duggan versus andre the giant amazing i mean it was a huge double thrill uh you know to be main event at the garden to be main event with Andre the Giant, you know, and no matter what profession you're in, the ballet or the arts or music, you sell out the garden, you sell out the garden. And me and Andre, we, we sold out the garden. Andre beat the hell out of me. <laughs> 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 I got on the plane the next day, a businessman's like, I had a rough day at the office. <laughs> my brother. <laughs> you don't know the half of it, pal. He got done with a giant, and he still had villagers in his teeth from the night before. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, I mean, uh, Andre was already a huge, huge star, like friends with Muhammad Ali, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like an international massive star. So, I mean, for you to see your name on a marquee next to his in MSG, man, really big deal. Yeah. And, of course, the biggest feather in my cap is winning the first ever Royal Rumble. So, yes. professionally... But personally, the Madison Square Garden show is what I remember most fondly. Now, I'm not going to ask you to name three, uh, but maybe just one off the top of your head. What about a match that you watched that you were like, boy, that was that's one of the better matches I've ever seen? Ooh. Mm. I know. I don't know, brother. Yeah. You know, I haven't watched a whole lot of matches. As soon as my match is over. (laughs) <laughs> I, I got out of there, man. So I never really saw much of the main event stuff. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you but, say that because I mean, as I read, any, any of the real talent guys, Steamboat, uh, uh, Brett, Sean, guys that could actually wrestle, you know. Uh, I mean, that any of those matchups would be super. I mean, uh, Sean and Flair, when the Flair's goodbye match, you know, where Sean uh, told him he was sorry and gave him the kick. That, that one, that one, I remember, I guess, but uh, yeah, not that, not that many, man. I was usually on, on the way out. <laughs> Off to the next town, I get it. Um, yes, I was going right to the hotel or the next town. All right, Jim. Jake <laughs> would try to get me to go out, but I would say no, Jake. Oh, it's I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> I know Jake well enough to know he's he's convincing you, right? <laughs> yeah, Jake and I had a good time, man. That's awesome, man. Um, well, look, we will do one more, and then I'll let you go, Jim. We've got MB86 Trains, I guess is how you say it. Uh, they ask, would Hacksaw have liked to compete in any of the more modern gimmick matches, such as Hell in a Cell, Elimination Chamber, or Money in the Bank? And if so, who would his dream opponent be for the match? No way, man. Not for so, you. So, uh, tables, the ladders and chairs and all that bob wire and all that. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad enough if I scanned our act bar, burned me with fire one time. That was about as gimmicky as I got. I mean, uh, not counting the tuxedo stuff, but I mean, actual physical stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I did that to a limit. You know, it was hard to get my old ass up on the top rope. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason they call them high risk moves. You know, it's funny reading that question and picturing you in something like the Hell in a Cell, especially after what we saw from Mick Foley, where he was thrown from the top. Have you ever seen that clip? Yes. Yeah. 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 And Mick, you know, that's what he's 10, 12 years younger than me. You can, I mean, he, he sacrificed his body. I mean, he's broke to pieces. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, there's there's life after wrestling. 
And you, you sacrifice your body like that, you got to give those guys kind of credit. Of course, me and Buzz Sawyer, we had some pretty vicious dog collar matches. Those that, were great. Uh, Muckers had survived. We were really yanking on our necks and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, nothing like the, the crazy. And that they're getting, you know, pretty soon they're going to have a guillotine match. <laughs> the loser gets his head shot right off. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised with some of this I mean, stuff. What the hell are they going to follow it with? You know, that in the old days, did somebody sell a punch? <laughs> that was he a punched problem. him. He went down. Holy shit. That was a problem with Mick coming off the top of the cell is that now every time they did a Hell in a Cell after that, the guys felt like they had to top it. And how do you top getting thrown off the cell? Yeah. But, well, you know, Brody taught me that. When you're following a match, and the match before you has the people standing up, throwing stuff in the ring, just going crazy and wild, you know what you do? Grab a headlock. Sit yeah. everybody back down. Shit, everybody down. Let everybody get done with the bullshit and then start you bring them back up. Orchestrate the people. Gotcha. So you want them to call them. You themselves can't go out there and they're this high and then bring them this high. You ain't going to do that. Right. If they're this high. Bring them back down. Sit in the headlock and work, you know, do works. And then after everybody ah, kind of settles down, rebuild. That's why he's one of the best, man. That's incredible. Great advice. Um, and hey, look, before I let you go, I did want to ask because it's a related question here. Uh, Mick Foley recently announced that he's looking to do one last match when he turns uh, 60 years old. He's trying to lose 100 pounds and compete one more time, and he wants it to be a death match. Uh, so, Jim, well, hearing that. I'm to go a match. I, if they, they want to want some little bread if they go go a team match. I, mean, <laughs> I should have got some bread on that Stone Cold thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, go ahead though it, it, so he wanted to have one last match oh yeah yeah one last match and uh it's i i just want to get your take on it man 60 years old mick he's already pretty beat up he's he's had a lot of hard miles uh what do you think do you think it's uh a, a good move on mick's part yeah i was in the ring at 60 yeah i i i, I was in the ring right up to like 64 before i had the heart problem there you know i was i was, I was still in the ring and and people were like well heck saw you still wrestle I said, well, I still go to the ring. <laughs> but I tell the younger kids, it's more than taking bumps. You know, at 64, 65 years old, I had no physical attributes, but I could still entertain a crowd, tough guy, everybody up in the place chanting USA. It's more than just that. Have a ring presence. Tell a story. It's more than just taking bumps for most people. Mick, though, he's like you said earlier, he set the bar so high that he's coming back. Everybody wants to see him bump. But uh, first, I, you know, uh, I don't know. I know Mick kind of well, not real well. But, uh, you know, I check, check my body. I know I couldn't obviously take a bump now. I could probably 60 take a bump, but uh, that be, might be the last one. <laughs> might, might call it a death match. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope Mick is going to be okay. Uh, yeah. and, we and get a lot of great coverage if it is. <laughs> oh yeah, and hey, you know, it's and, like I'm when like, I was in the hospital. Jake called me. He goes, Duggan, you can bump up your prices. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Jake, all right? <laughs> um, if is there any amount of money that could get you to compete in one more match? Um, yeah, I could I definitely I have a Walker match. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to book the this. First for one of the me. ring wins. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could work the apron or something for, you know, uh, but I, I, I don't see that ever happen. I never had a big retirement match. Everybody had a nice, great, big retirement match. Yeah. You know, my match last match was like a, and I did a few indies and just kind of dragged away, you know. Which do you is, remember? You know, do you remember who had your last match by any chance? My last match never kind of found it because uh, uh, since we found the Cape of Crown, we're looking about my old blue boots, and the, the gentleman wants uh, my blue boots, maybe. And oh, we man. found the last time I wore them, I was in a six-man tag with Ricky and Robert at an indie show up in, uh, in North Carolina. So, hey, man, pretty good way to go out. Yeah, well, yeah, with well, two good guys, I really enjoyed being with guys from Mid South and. Uh, like I said, I worked the apron rug as well as Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Sarge would always give me a short arm tag, you know. I'd be going, Sarge, give me the tag. USA! You! <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's the veteran, Wiley. He's a smart guy, yeah. 
<laughs> well, look, guys, uh, we're having a lot of fun with the interaction here on YouTube and you guys asking us questions. Please keep them coming. And by the way, if you want a little extra interaction with Hacksaw Jim Duggan, again, make sure you get out there to WrestleCon for WrestleMania weekend. Uh, get to meet him. Get that incredible photo op with the crown and the cape. Man, what an awesome surprise that is. But also, guys, if you can't make it to WrestleCon, you can still interact with old Hacksaw Jim Duggan. All you got to do is go to what Cameo. Old Hacksaw oh, Jim boy. Duggan, young, always smokes. I meant to say. Flair Hogan call me kid. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to Jake say young Jake Hacksaw. is younger, but I want to see a birth certificate. You tell Jake I want to see the darn birth certificate. Oh, I'm you younger, Dougie. He better show He's his driver's right. license at least. I'm, I I'm like to stand buying. next to him. <laughs> but look, it's Jim. Can You can have a personal interaction with Jim at cameo.com forward slash Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Jim is awesome at these. Puts a lot of effort into them. I know a lot of celebrities, they'll get their cameo, and it's like a real quick, hey, yeah, thanks. Thanks for thanks for reaching out. Nope, not the case with Hacksaw. Uh, again, it's cameo.com forward slash Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Go and check out the reviews. Everybody loves getting them, right, Jim? No, not everybody. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jake must have commented on a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got to be him yeah, out there. I have a good time with him. I like to interact with the folks. That's, that's why you enjoy the, the Comic Cons. And like I said earlier in the show, it's uh, to say thank you. It's humbling to have folks come up for their hard earned money, stand in line to buy an autographed picture or get a picture stand next to me. I mean, yeah, why can you not? Uh, how can you not be humbled by it? Man, amazing, uh, and it really speaks to the indelible mark that you left on wrestling. And uh, hey, one last thing: go to hacksawjimduggenshop.com. All kinds of autographed merchandise over there, and Jim's fixing to add some more. He's got some new action figures coming out. You never know; some of those might make their way onto the site, and you can get them signed, personalized by Hacksaw Jim Duggan himself. So go and check it out. Have a look: hacksawjimduggenshop.com. And Jim, as always, man, I love getting to catch up with you and do these mailbag series. Next week we'll do a regular episode. We'll be back with a mailbag uh, a couple weeks after that, and man, we'll just keep this train rolling here on youtube sounds good buddy and you know you ducked me in the beginning of the show we got carried away without doing one <laughs> all right here we go but even little piper will give me one so let's do one together brother here we go oh! brother. Oh! Oh! <laughs> you gotta work on your home I, my timing at least has got to get better <laughs> well, you've had a rough week buddy congratulations my friend hey thank you jim and thank you to all the listeners we'll catch you next hey, time right here on the hacksaw hour Bye, folks. Hacksaw, tough guy. No one is the hacksaw hour. Two by four, it is hacksaw, tough guy. No one is the hacksaw.